So we're back from our buggy buying um, experience. Um, and it's weird, you know, it really makes it more real just seeing that, that buggy or travel system as they call these things now. And we're very lucky because my parents um, got it for us. So very, very lucky to have to get something such a generous offer because, you know, that's obviously one of the biggest things I suppose you need. Um, but yeah, it just feels so real. And the girl in the shop was going through, you know, all the how to put it in and put it out. And oh my God, so when I got home, I was practicing. Now it's actually quite easy, but you know, it's it's kind of mad to think about there could be a crying baby in it or oh, or just a baby. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it all out then, but anyway. Actually, after um, the breastfeeding class, there was a few things I decided I probably needed. <sighs> and this is all like scary <laughs> to think that I may need it, but anyway. So I did, I got all these things that they told me I'm gonna need. What else is there? Oh yeah, maybe not that many things. So this um, lanolin cream for sore nipples. Nice. But again, apparently it helps to, um, oh yeah, it helps to um, Claire in the class was saying it just helps to create a shield around the nipple so that it, um, so when they're tender that it doesn't hurt as much. Then I got these multi-man compress things, these cold compress, which again, one of my friends had told me, um, you know, can really help with, um, you know, again, sore boobs and sore nipples, which apparently is to be maybe expected, at least discomfort at the start. So I got those. Uh, then got nipple shields that they talked about in the class, and my friend said she got those also which said she wish she'd known about them. And again, like Claire said, I suppose it's not a, um, this little bag, boxy thing. It's not a necessarily, it's kind of mad, isn't it? I think I might have to use these. Um, but she's saying this is not necessarily a solution if things aren't working, but it definitely can, I, oh yeah, but it definitely can um, help if, you know, your nipples are sore and you want to, you want to continue feeding, so, have those. Um, it's like I can't even get them in the box. I might have, I'm gonna use them. When people start talking about breastfeeding, I think people are very, um, well, maybe, I suppose they're passionate maybe one way or the other. Um, and I was talking to someone who, um, you know, I was saying I had gone to this class and you know, that I, I found it really good. And you know, I like to prepare. Um, and you know, I think some people's reaction, which I find, I suppose, isn't how I would look at anything, but is that, you know, breastfeeding is the most natural thing in the world, so there should be no need to prepare, and that third world countries, or if you lived in a jungle, you know, what are you gonna do? But, you know, I suppose I, I from what I've heard from friends who've breastfed, that preparing for it really made a difference to them. And I think, you know, we've come from, it's different maybe in the third world and maybe in the jungle <laughs> where, you know, there's a breastfeeding culture and you've got women around you that are going to support it. You know, we don't have that as much anymore. So I think that's why preparing classes before you have the baby and preparing for it and learning more about our bodies that we actually don't really, you know, know about um, is something that's really, really important. And I suppose luckily we're not in the third world and we've got all these little... <laughs> things that can help us get through um, something that, you know, is probably going to be really, really challenging. And um, it's going to be really challenging with very little sleep on board. So it's, it's so hard to even imagine right now for me what that is even going to be like. Like I, have, I can't get even my head around it, you know, because these things aren't necessarily going to save me either. So. so yeah, it's Friday evening. I am waiting on one of my friends to pick me up for dinner. Me and two of my friends are going out for dinner. Um, and then tomorrow's All Ireland again. <laughs> so, uh, busy day tomorrow, especially because it's the later start of the match. So it's probably going to be quite a long day tomorrow. Take two, All Ireland replay. Alan's driving again. Say hello, Alan. Hello. 
Raymond is with us. We're on the wheel. brother. Raymond is with us. So here's to a good day, and I can absolutely guarantee that if it's a replay again, I won't be at it. And Alan is messing in the car. Anyway, off tip. So it's all Ireland final replay day. Um, I'm sitting down, I'm being good. I'm normally out there with the boys during warm up. So it's very hard for me to be sitting down today. Um, but I absolutely have to because that memory of three weeks ago and how I'm feeling is not that far away. And, and I uh, still remember it. So I've um, delegated my duties to some of the other backroom team members who I'm very confident will uh, <laughs> fulfill it. And um, yeah, so here's to a good match. So what can you say? It's just devastating. <sighs> I just feel so bad for the players and it's just shit. That's sport, I suppose. But, um, yeah, but I'm feeling this way. Imagine how the players feel. So it's just, uh, it's because everyone invested so much in, in it. <sighs> Absolutely devastating. It's, al it's almost like a death, and I know that sounds so extreme, but <sighs> sport is so cruel.